I'm gonna be showing you how to make Minecraft tools. Like real life Minecraft tools, like handmade little tools, aren't they cool? And to do that we're gonna be using these. These are little wooden camping blocks and they are the perfect little pixel size for this. How cool are they? You can buy these from Amazon, I'll leave a link to all the materials in the description below. And speaking of materials, you'll need the blocks, some paint and a paintbrush, some glue, and I've also created some templates. I used Photoshop to build all these tools so that you can see the breakdown of all the colours. And I'm going to be making five tools. I'm going to make a stone hoe, an iron shovel, a gold axe, a diamond sword, and an enchanted pickaxe. Now before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and stick around to the end because I'm going to take you on a tour through my Minecraft world. The first step is going to be dividing up all the little blocks into the different amounts that you're going to need for each of the colours. Now because I'm doing five tools, I'm going to put all the browns together so that when I mix up the paint, I only have to do it in one batch and I can keep the colours consistent. I'm going to be using acrylic paint for this. This is just your standard acrylic paint that you can get from any craft shop. And like I said, I will leave a link in the description where you can buy these paints on Amazon. Now previously I did make these tools and I used alcohol ink to colour them in. But as you can see, the colour's really patchy and you can see the wood grain through the colour and I don't know, I just didn't really like how they turned out. So I redid them with acrylic paint and I think they turned out a lot better. Once you've got all the little blocks divided up, you're going to be spending a lot of time painting them. Because I'm doing five tools, I had to paint 316 blocks, which did take quite a while. But the best thing that you can do with this is to just take your time because the better paint job you do, the better they're going to look in the end. I found that the easiest way to paint them was to hold a block at the top and the bottom and paint four sides, then put it down, wait for the paint to dry, and then go in and paint the other two sides. And if you're doing them in batches of colours, like by the time you get to the last block, you know, the paint will have dried on the first one, so you can go back and then keep painting the other two sides on the blocks. And like I said, take your time with this and do a good job. I did two or three coats of paint on each block and sometimes up to four or five, but I definitely think it was well worth it in the end. Once you're finished painting, make sure that you check the templates. I've left a link in the description below where you can download and print them out and have them to hand when you're actually building the tools. Because although I had the templates with me, I actually messed up quite a few times. So make sure that you do keep checking them. To make the tool, you want to lay out all the blocks first so that you can see what you're working with and make sure that you've got all the right colors together and you've got all the blocks that you need. And to glue them together, I'm going to be using a tacky glue. This is a PVA glue, which is slightly thicker. And I found it was much easier to hold the blocks together without them getting all twisted. Again, take your time while gluing these up and do it in sections. You don't want to do too many blocks at once because it becomes way too difficult to hold. And you'll see that when I get to the golden axe because it just falls apart in my hands. So once you've done a load of small sections and the glue has dried, then you can glue together some of the larger sections and just build it up bit by bit. As you're gluing the blocks together, make sure that you keep pressing it down against the surface that you're working on. This will help keep it aligned and straight so that they don't get twisted. Because as you go, if you get some of the blocks twisted, it's just not going to join up together very well. And it'll just end up falling apart or just looking really strange and wonky. So do make sure that you keep pressing it against the surface to keep it flat.
Now the blocks aren't perfectly square, so you will find some pieces don't line up very well anyway, and you may not be able to glue some of the blocks together. And that's why gluing it in sections really helps because you've got other blocks next to it that are already glued in place. And once again, make sure that when you're gluing it up, you check the templates because I got some of them a little bit wrong and I had to break them apart but that was a really good indication of how well the glue actually holds together. I mean, it wasn't a huge problem, but you just wanna get it right in the first place. Once you've got it all glued together, what I did was cover the whole thing in glue, which gives it a really nice, shiny look and it also helps keep it together, especially in those places where some of the blocks don't quite fit together properly. I covered both sides of each of the tools with glue as well as all along the edges and I think it really helps hold them all together. So apart from waiting for the paint to dry and for the glue to dry, it's actually a pretty simple project and at the end of it, you've got these great tools and you can stick them up on your wall. You could even glue some like hooks to the top or maybe even put those like command strips on the back, but uh, I think they turned out great. And they're sturdy enough that they're not going to fall apart. Um, obviously you wouldn't want to actually go out and mine rocks with them. Uh, they're really just for display, but yeah, here they are. I think they turned out great. So if you make some yourself, please tag me on social media. You can find me at Swan Star Designs across all the social channels. I'd love to see what you come up with. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video. Starting on the docks, we're going to jump in the boat and we're going to take the boat entrance into my cave. I built this out of a ravine, I dug it out, and yes, it did take quite a while. So coming down into the main bit, here's my art gallery. I've got some um, furnaces and my craft table, and I've got all my storage here and then my little bed in the corner next to a great big skull. Going up these stairs, we're gonna go into my secret library. And of course, this is where I try to enchant all my tools. Coming back down and across to the other side, we're gonna go into the wizard's dungeon. Down these stairs into the depths of the mountain is my brewing stand. Coming back up, this bit is mainly unfinished. I've dug it out, but I haven't really changed all the rocks. I'm thinking of doing a couple of different levels and bringing some of the new nether blocks in there to decorate it. Going down here, I've got another iron golem who's seen better days. And this is a messy area. It's just where I mine diamonds. And of course, there's a couple of chickens that got trapped down there along with the iron golem. Now let's go up my elevator, which needs to be repaired. And we're into my garden. So I've collected all these flowers from everywhere and I'm gonna bring some bees in just to make a little beehive home here. To the right of the garden, I'm gonna be building a huge stable for a load of horses. And up at the end here, I've got my farm. I've got a couple of sheep, I've got a, a load of chickens <laughs> and even more cows. Going back through the garden, we get to my wheat crops. And across to the right here, I've got a mob spawner, so I can level up whenever I need to. And on these huge trees, I'm going to be building some wooden walkways, kind of like the forests of Endor, like the, the Ewok village. So I'm going to be building all that out at some point. I might stream it on Twitch as well.
heading back to my base you can see it was built under a mountain and at the top here I've got a walkway which doesn't really go anywhere but I think I'm going to put some railway tracks on that just for some fun and you can see the desert in the distance I have explored all that and the village nearby doesn't have any villages in it unfortunately so coming back to my underground lair this is it I've got a glass top between my functional area and the huge cathedral roof and uh, it's still a work in progress I try to stream it sometimes on Twitch so follow me on Twitter and I'll tweet when I'm live so I hope you enjoyed that little whistle stop tour. I have been playing way too much Minecraft, but it is just too much fun. So hopefully I'll see you on Twitch. Thanks again for watching and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in my next video.